tell you a little story about a man I know. Actually, I don't know him, but those are lyrics from a George Thorogood song. I just like the lyric. But anyway, I, I do have a story to tell you about a man I know of. But before we get to that, I've been thinking. I'm driving around in the third gen Tacoma. Gonna get the fourth gen here sooner or later. And there's one big thing that I'm really gonna miss in going to the fourth gen from the third gen. And that is the lack of the auto stop system. The third generation Tacoma does not have the auto stop system. It's one of the biggest things that I love about it, right? Because I don't have to remember to push that stupid button every time I get in the truck so that the auto stop system doesn't kick in while I'm stopped somewhere. I absolutely hate that system and unfortunately, Toyota has thrown it into the fourth generation or the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. It's gonna drive me nuts, but Toyota did do one thing right. I have found with their system, as opposed to Jeep system, you have to depress the brake pedal pretty firmly before the system kicks in. So you can easily manipulate it by just not pushing the brake all the way to the floor. Doesn't mean the truck isn't gonna stop, you just have to remember to do that or push that stupid button, either way. Now, let's tell you the story about a man I know of. You know, I had traded a truck in. Uh, actually, it was for this truck, my gray or magnetic gray metallic Toyota Tacoma. It had all kinds of options and things on it. I left the roll bar and the switch system and the lighting and more, all kinds of stuff. Shouldn't have done that. Should have taken a lot of stuff off. All I did is purchase all of it again down the road. But anyway, I traded that truck in. It probably had, I'll bet you, somewhere between eight and $10,000 worth of aftermarket parts on it. And they still had trouble selling it. And there's a reason they had trouble selling it. It's because it was a four by two, two wheel drive. People are so hung up on four wheel drive they won't even look at a truck that has all kinds of added options and stuff on it. Now, this guy is a guy that had never used four-wheel drive. He told the dealership that the reason he wanted a four-wheel drive is because his buddies make fun of him. He can't pull people out when they get into trouble. How often does that happen anyway? I mean, if you don't have four-wheel drive, you've never been four-wheel driving, you obviously either didn't need it or you never go four-wheeling, then why are you worried about pulling people out of places? Because it's never gonna come up, right? Nonetheless, that's why he didn't, he didn't, I shouldn't say he didn't buy the truck. Let me, let me correct my story a little bit. He did buy the truck and then he returned it and tried to say something was wrong with it. There was nothing wrong with that truck. I owned that truck. I drove that truck. There were no problems with it whatsoever. It was an excuse to try to turn it in, although, or return it, not even return it, trade it, because that's what he ended up doing for a four wheel drive. Now, you don't really need a reason to go in and trade out a truck, right? I mean, you can do anything you want. If you want to trade it off, trade it off. The dealer doesn't care. Now, the good thing for the dealer is, is of course, they double dipped on that truck. They sold it the first time, they made money. The guy brought it back, they sold it a second time, they made more money. It was like a double gotcha sale for the dealership. And kudos to them. I mean, in the end, the guy got what he wanted, probably paid more money for it, I'm sure. More money either in payments or cash out the door, I don't know which. But in the end, I guess both people won, they got what they wanted. But it's amazing to me that today, we still are concerned if a truck isn't four wheel drive, even if you don't need four wheel drive. Take me for example, I live in South Texas. I've talked about it many times on the channel. I live so far in South Texas that it's like tropical here. I mean, you guys have seen palm trees and maybe cactuses and javelinas. If you don't know what a javelina is, look it up. But we have all of that down here because I live in a warm climate. That of course means I don't get snow. We don't get ice. We get rain, but you get rain no matter where you live, right? Unless you live in, I don't know, Death Valley or somewhere. I don't know where on the planet does not get any rain. And people still manage to drive 
two wheel drive vehicles, because that's one of the biggest arguments I've heard for going four wheel drive, even when you don't need it, is that you need it in the rain. Oh, that's a bunch of BS. I would argue you don't even need it in snow. I've had two wheel drive cars most of my earlier life, and I lived up north where we had snow, and I never once had any big problem. Matter of fact, the time that I had the biggest problem was when I was driving a four wheel drive. Actually, it wasn't a four wheel drive. It was a Toyota Tacoma pre-runner where you could lock the back and both back wheels would spin. The problem is it wouldn't move. It sat there and just kind of fishtailed back and forth, but still stuck. It's like somebody had their hand on the front of the truck and wouldn't let it move. It was the damnedest thing. I got rid of that truck shortly after that because I was so mad that I had this dual drive vehicle and got stuck in the snow. So it doesn't really matter. It's really all about knowing how to drive in the conditions that you're in. I have seen four wheel drive trucks stuck before. You can get them stuck if you go into a, an environment that is bad enough, like a deep mud hole or something. I mean, you'll get all four tires stuck in there and they'll all spin. You still won't move and four wheel drive means nothing. It's all about being able to drive in the conditions that you're driving in, or I should say knowing how to drive in the conditions that you're in. Now, what does that mean for me? Well, I'm really gonna take either on this 2024 Tacoma that eventually I'll have. Uh, my preference, two wheel drive. I don't need to pay the extra three or four grand so that I can feel more like a man and say I have four wheel drive because that kind of stuff doesn't bother me. If it did, I'd just put a four wheel drive emblem on the back and most people wouldn't know the difference, particularly after I lift it, which I'm gonna do. So nobody will know. It doesn't really make that big of a difference to me. I'm not a big time off-roader. There's really nowhere to go off-roading except the beach. I could go to the beach and run up and down the sand and stay in the sand that's really compact so that four wheel drive wouldn't matter anyway. I'm not really looking to pull people out. You know, it sounded to me like the guy I mentioned earlier that I don't know um, was looking to get into situations where he could maybe help somebody out. I don't know, and kudos to him. I mean, if you are stuck somewhere, it surely is nice if somebody comes along and is willing to pull you out. Me, I'm too concerned about damaging my truck or maybe damaging theirs. Ever heard of an instance where somebody was nice and went to pull somebody out and damaged their bumper because they didn't hook up the tow strap correctly? I have heard of this. And the other person wanted them to actually pay for the damage even though they helped them. Somehow claiming that they didn't know what they were doing. If they didn't know what they were doing, they shouldn't have helped them. You see, that's the kind of world we live in. Absolutely absurd. Anyway, I just wanted to get on, talk about that a minute. The old uh, bias towards four wheel drive is alive and well and still strong. And apparently if you don't drive a four wheel drive truck, you are not a man. I don't know what you are. Leave a comment, let me know. Do you care about that yourself? Are you one of those? I'd just be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.